ABC Kinder Teach presents Milo Imagines the World, written by Matt De La Pena, illustrated by Christian Robinson. What begins as a slow, distant glow grows and grows into a tired train a train that has been used a lot, that clatters down the tracks. A cool rush of wind quiets into a screech of steel, and when the doors slide open, Milo slips aboard. And there's Milo. When a train comes, it's coming fast, and you can kind of feel the breeze that it makes before it gets to the station platform. And when it stops, it kind of makes a bit of a squealing noise, like <coughs> The train bucks back into motion, which means it starts back up. And he and his sister squeeze onto bench seats. So there's Milo. There's Milo's sister. The whiskered man beside Milo, right there, has a face of concentration thinking hard about things. It looks like he's doing a crossword puzzle. A businessman has a blank, lonely face. So he's looking at this man and thinking that he looks sad and lonely and like he's not really thinking about a lot of things, maybe. The wedding dressed woman right there near the far door has a face made out of light which means she looks very happy because she's getting married while the dog peeking out of her handbag has no face at all just a long lolling tongue and when he says no face at all he really says that all he's really seeing is the dog's tongue even though obviously it does have a face These monthly Sunday subway rides, a subway is a train that runs underground, and that's an example of one, are never ending, which means every Sunday he has to take the subway or underground train someplace. I wonder where he's going. And as usual, Milo is a shook up soda. So he was not only bounced around on the train, but he's also kind of nervous about what he's going to be doing when he gets off the train. Excitement stacked on top of worry, on top of confusion, on top of love. So he's excited about where he's going. He's worried about where he's going. He's confused about what is happening when he gets there. And he's also thinking about maybe someone that he loves. To keep himself from bursting, feeling too many things, he studies the faces around him and makes pictures of their lives. So he looks at the people around him and says, Hmm, I wonder what they do when they get off the train. At a downtown local stop, the whiskered man, right there, folds up his crossword and hurries off the train. So I bet he's going to be drawing something about where he thinks he's going. Milo imagines, which means it's not necessarily real, it's just what he is guessing, him trudging, walking like he was very tired, through brown mounds of slush, dirty, watery snow. It's a five-flight climb, which means he has to climb up all the way up there, to his cluttered, many things in it, apartment, where he's greeted by mewling, or meowing, cats, and burrowing, digging hold rats. So he's imagining him going someplace where his apartment has a lot of junk in it, and there's a lot of cats, and maybe some rats, because it may not be a great place to live. Late that night, the door to the parakeet cage mysteriously falls open and the cats gather on the cold sill to watch the birds fly free above the city. So he's imagining this man also has a parakeet bird and that at night it gets out of its cage and flies away. So again, this is just what he imagines. It's not necessarily real. Parakeets, which might look like this, tweet songs of longing 
feeling sad because they are missing others, as the man sips tepid, not very warm, soup, hunched over a game of solitaire. It's a card game you play by yourself. So he's drawing a picture of a man who looks like he is pretty lonely and sad and maybe doesn't have a lot of friends or a lot of extra money. Milo tugs his sister's sleeve and holds up his picture. So he's showing her the picture. But even when she turns to look, he can tell she doesn't see. She's a shook up soda too. So he tries to show his sister the picture they drew. But she's kind of ignoring him because she has worry and love and is nervous about where they're going as well. So I wonder where they're going. A boy in a suit, right there, boards the train with his dad. His hair is a perfect part, which means it's perfectly parted. And there's not a single scuff on his bright white Nikes. Hmm, I wonder where he's going. Milo imagines the clop, clop, clop of the horse-drawn carriage that will carry him to his castle. So he's imagining this boy has a lot of money and he gets to do all sorts of fancy things. He imagines the clink, clink, clink of the guards slowly lowering the drawbridge, which also might look like this. It goes up to keep people from getting into the castle that they don't want to. Across the human-made moat, and a moat is just a big pond around the castle, again, to help keep people out that they don't want to come to their castle. The boy is met by a butler, two maids, and a gourmet chef, a cook who makes fancy food, offering crust-free sandwich squares. So he's imagining this boy has a lot of money. But he may not. Milo flips to a fresh page at a bustling, busy with many people, midtown stop. When the wedding-dressed woman strides off the train, walks with long steps, a band of street performers launches into Here Comes the Bride, and everyone on the platform stops and cheers, so they're all, like, happy that she's getting married. That's really nice. Milo imagines the grand cathedral ceremony where the couples will be pronounced, told in front of others, husband and wife. Imagines the groom whisking, quickly taking his new bride to an awaiting hot air balloon where the pilot loads them in with blankets and blasts the heat and up, up they go, hand in hand, beyond the concrete walls of the city into the infinite blue, which means the blue sky as far as they can see. So this is what he's imagining is going to happen. It's not necessarily what happens, but it's what he imagines. Milo holds up this picture too, but his sister shoes him away. Can't you see I'm playing my game? So she doesn't want to be bothered because, again, she's worried about where she's going and kind of confused. He watches her thumbs bang around her smudged screen, then turns back to the boy in the suit. They lock eyes for a few long seconds and suddenly it feels like the walls are closing in around Milo which means he's feeling nervous and more worried. The spell is broken when a crew of breakers, people that dance, bounds onto the train announcing you all ready for a show? Several curious faces look up as the beat drops and music plays. And now the girls are walking up walls to doing all their dance steps. They're whirling around poles. They're back flipping over shopping bags. When the train pulls into the next stop, they collect a few dollars and scramble for another car. So these girls get on these trains and they do a little bit of dancing and they hope people give them a little bit of money for the show. And then they get off the train and they do things on another train and then another train to try to get some money. Milo imagines them going from train to train doing their act as everyone watches. But even after the performances are over, faces still follow their every move. 
when they walk down the electronics aisle at the department store. So these girls go into the store and this man is watching them and he's not happy. So he's thinking, hmm, these people are probably going to steal from me. So I'm going to be watching them very carefully. And that may not be true at all. When they cross into the fancy neighborhood, so people are looking at them like, what are you doing here? You need to go someplace else. You're going to cause trouble. And they're not being very nice to these girls. Milo doesn't really like this picture, so he puts away his pad and turns to his reflection in the window. So he doesn't like what is happening in this picture that he drew, so he's going to kind of cross it off and not draw anymore. What do people imagine about his face? So he's looking at himself, thinking, what do people think about me? Can they see him reciting, reading aloud for others, his volcano poem to the class? Can they hear his mom's soothing, relaxing or calming voice, reading him a bedtime book over the phone? Why would she be reading a bedtime book over the phone and not in his actual room? Hmm. Maybe this has something to do about where they're going today and every Sunday once a month. Can they smell the chili Colorado bubbling in a pot in his auntie's apartment near the cemetery? So he must live with his aunt, not his mom. Hmm. Butterflies flood, he feels nervous, Milo's stomach when it's finally their stop. He follows his sister onto the cold station platform and up the stairs. And there they are going up the stairs. I wonder where they're going. Something about the mother. Maybe she's in the hospital? Hmm. Above ground, he's surprised to see the boy in the suit a few paces ahead. Or a few steps ahead. So this must be the boy a few steps ahead. And there's Milo and his sister. And it looks like there might be police officers there. So could it be a jail? He's even more surprised when the boy joins the long line. There's the boy. To pass through the metal detector to make sure you don't have metal in your pockets. Milo's sister suddenly bends to give him a hug. I didn't mean to snap at you, she says. She takes his hand, adding, You have your picture ready? He nods, feeling the warmth of her fingers. She's telling him, I'm sorry I was not very nice on the train. I was just thinking about a lot of things. As they slowly shuffle forward, move forward without picking up their feet, Milo studies the boy in the suit, his dad rubbing his thin shoulders, and a thought occurs to him. Maybe you can't really know anyone just by looking at their face. So he's saying that you cannot really tell what a person is like by looking at them only. You have to know much more about their life, so you're not supposed to judge other people because you just don't know what's going on in their life. Milo tries to reimagine all the pictures he made on the train. Maybe he could have done it like this instead. Maybe instead of the guy who had to climb up all the stairs and lives with his cats and his parakeet gets away, instead of that being what really happens to the guy, maybe he goes home to a family with a cat and a couple of kids and there's the parakeet. Or this, where the woman is marrying another woman, not a man. Or this, or maybe these kids who do the dancing on the train go to a nice place to live. We just don't know. Milo's chest fills with excitement when he spots his mom through the crowd. There's his mom. His sister rushes to give her a hug before pulling Milo in too. And it's in this tight tangle of familiar arms that he feels most alive. So a tight tangle of familiar arms is the mom is hugging the sister and Milo and Milo is hugging the mom and the sister and everybody's hugging each other. And he is really, really happy about that. So his mom is actually in jail. We don't know what happened. And it could be a lot of different things, but they're really sad that she's there, and she's sad that she's there. 
When they separate, Milo flips through his pad until he finds the right picture. I made this for you, he says, holding it up, and he watches for the smile. He hopes will spread across his mom's face. So Milo has drawn a picture, and he gives it to his mom, maybe so she can hang it up in her room. And maybe the picture is meant to make his mom feel a little bit less sad when they leave. And it's a picture of them in a house eating ice cream on the front steps and she's no longer in jail. So that's a picture to make her hopefully feel better.